we are going to solve using substitution a system of equations. A system of equations happens when we have two equations of a line. If we look at these equations, they are not written as y equals mx plus b. They're written in a different way, but they are still equations of a line, and if we wanted, we could rearrange them to look like y equals mx plus b. Our first step when we're solving by substitution is to choose one of the two equations and one of the two variables to isolate. So the obvious choices for this particular scenario are to choose one of the two y values because they don't have numbers attached to them. So if we choose one of the y values, we can isolate them easily. The most obvious place to start is with this red equation and start moving everything away from the y. If you do that, you end up with negative 2x minus 5 is equal to negative y, which is helpful. We're closer to having a variable isolated, but that y is not actually isolated yet because it is negative. At this point, you have two choices. We talked before that you can use the trick that you just change every single term to its opposite sign, which basically what you're doing is dividing everything by this negative one, which leaves you with 2x plus 5 is equal to y. Some of you prefer to think of it as moving the y to the left-hand side and moving everything else to the right-hand side. So you could think of it as y equals 2x plus 5, which is the exact same equation. So whichever one you prefer, you can use, but it's very important that you end up getting the variable isolated and positive. So if you have the negative version, it will mess everything up after that. Once we have the letter isolated in one of the equations, we're going to sub it into the equation we haven't touched yet. So what we're going to do now is sub this equation 3 into the original equation 2 that we haven't yet manipulated. So we're going to rewrite equation 2. And then we are going to replace the y value in equation 2 with what we found out that y is equal to. So we said y was equal to 2x plus 5. So we're going to put that here. Once we get to this step, we now have to solve for the variable in that equation. We're happy that we see there's only an x in this equation, so we know we did it that correctly. So just to review, we knew to replace y because y was the one we had isolated. So hopefully that makes sense. We're substituting in a value for y that we know is the same thing as y. This particular equation is easy because there is no number in front of the brackets, so you could just drop them, but I'll show you what to do if there was a number there. So this is basically a 1 that we don't write. We have to multiply that 1 by everything inside. So we end up with 4x plus 2x plus 5 plus 1 equals 0. The next thing we're going to do is group all the like terms. So the like terms here are the 4x and the 2x, which give us 6x, and the 5 and the 1, which give us 6. And we just continue with our regular solving equation steps. So we have 6x equals negative 6. And x ends up being negative 1. We're happy at this point. We've done all the hard work. We already know half of our solution. So the point of intersection is going to have an x coordinate of negative 1. We always remember that we write those coordinates x and then y. So we can put the negative 1 in. We just have to find that second coordinate. We're going to do that by subbing this x equal to negative 1 into our isolated equation. So we will just re rewrite equation 3. and then replace the x with the value we found of negative 1. And we end up getting a y value of 3. And that is our point of intersection. If we had more time, we could grab a, Desmo, a computer and open up Desmos and graph the two original lines. So just type them in exactly the way they started. And we should see that they intersect at negative 1. Thank you.